Hello, and welcome back to Use Code Jam's Online Bits and Bytes Lessons. Today we are continuing with our Blockly unit in Code Adventures, and we'll be learning how to make a basic calculator. So let's go ahead and get started and pull up our Blockly development tool. So I'm going to open a new tab and go to developers.google.com backslash Blockly. And it will take us to this interface, and this is pretty much it. It's a little bit on like Scratch and Snap and other interfaces we've used where you click a button to run the editing tool or to enter the coding environment. For this one, it's just right on the page. Um, the first thing we got to do here is get rid of the um, default code. So we're just going to click this top block and drag it over to the trash can and release when we're on it. Um, so, like I said, we're going to be making a basic calculator, and what that is is a four-function calculator, meaning we'll be able to add, subtract, multiply, or divide two numbers. Um, this is a pretty standard coding exercise when you first start learning text-based coding. So if you work in Python, if you do Java or C, this is a program that you're going to see in those classes or in the exercises if you do an online course. Um, I've done it about two times, I think, in my classes, so it's pretty standard. Um, and we're going to do it with block code, but on the side you'll be able to see it um, show up in JavaScript. And we'll also take a look at Python later, so you can kind of see how our blocks correspond to the text version. So the first thing we got to do here is create a variable. And we're actually going to create about three or four variables. So we're going to Go to the variables drawer and click create. And we're going to name this first variable number one or num one. And then we're going to create a num two, an answer, and finally one named operator. And we'll get into what all of these are as we build the code. So when you're done, you should have um, answer or ands num1, num2, and operator. So we're going to create our, um, we're going to set the variables first. So what that means is we're going to create them within the program and then give them an initial starting value. So we're going to use the set block here and drag it into our space. Use the drop down to change this to um, num1. And then we're going to prompt the user for a number. So go to the text drawer and all the way down you're going to get prompt for text with message. And you're going to grab that block, connect it to our set block. Use the drop down to change text to number because we're doing math. We want to make sure that um, the input that we get from the user is an actual number and not text. There will be an exception to this in a minute, but we're going to start with our numbers first. Okay? So we're going to ask them to enter um, first number, or you can tell, tell them to enter a number um, that's greater than zero or positive or anything like that. So you can add other directions here, but I'm just gonna put first number. And then we're going to repeat this whole process to get our second number. So I'm going to go back to variables, get another set block, change operator to num2, go to text, and get all, all the way down to the prompt for text with message. Change text to number, because again, I want it stored as an integer or um, a float, which is a decimal number, whatever I want to use. Ask them for the second number. And so when we run the program, the program will ask us to enter a number and enter a second number and it will store them for us. The last thing we want to ask for is our operator. And so this is the symbol for addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. Um, and you can maybe in our text prompt um, you could maybe instead of saying operator, you could ask what uh, math operation uh, or um, give the operator for the function you, you want 
to do. Um, and we're leaving this one as text because we're entering a symbol. So that's not going to be processed by the computer as a number. It's going to always be processed as a string. And what you'll see in our program is that we're going to match that string in an if statement. So we're going to say if operator is equal to this symbol, so if the operator is equal to a plus sign, then we're going to have a, fun a math function that adds the two numbers together. And that's how we'll handle math. Um, but like I said, this is handled as a string, which doesn't mean anything. So if we just um, typed in, if we did like um, an if statement that said if everything is there, if everything exists, so if we have first number, second number, and the operator, and we just use those variables to do num1 plus num2 with the operator, we would most likely get an error, possibly just get a string printed out. It wouldn't actually do the math. So this is how we handle um, the user telling us what kind of math function we want to do is by taking the string symbol and matching it and then having that um, math operator in the if statement, which we're going to look at next. So go to the logic drawer. We're going to get this if do block. Click on this uh, blue gear and we're going to do three else if statements onto this if in the pop out. So that's one two, three, and then we're going to add a single else at the bottom. So this is going to take care of our four math conditions, and then we'll have a, um, it's called a default case sometimes, um, mostly in switch statements. It's called a default case if um, we've entered an operator that we're not going to do math for. So if somebody enters um, a power symbol, so that you have two raised to the second power. We, we're not covering that math right now, so we're going to display an error saying we can't do that operation. So once you have an if, three else ifs, and an else, click on that gear again, and we can start building our matching statement and our conditions. So the first one we're going to go to logic and get this blank equals blank drawer, or block, sorry and attach it to that first if statement. We're going to go to variables and get the operator block and put it on the left side of the equal sign. And then you're going to go to text and just get this plain text block, put it on the right of the equal sign and enter the plus symbol. So this condition is checking to see if the operator symbol was is for addition, so if we're getting that plus sign. In the do section, we're going to do, um, we're going to set the answer. So go to variables and get set. Change that drop down to and or answer. So, and then we're going to use math, a math block to actually complete the operation. So get this one plus one block. And we're going to go back to our variables to get the stored number. So we need num1 plus num2. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a try real quick. I'm going to run the program. You're going to see this pop-up box. This is part of the browser. So if you have um, pop-up windows turned off, this might not show. You may need to allow them for this activity and then um, re-enable them once we're done. So I'm going to enter 2, 4, and then type in the plus sign. So it worked. What we don't have right now is a print statement, so it, we don't know what the actual answer is, but I didn't get an error message and it ran for as much as I've coded, so that code worked. Um, but that's kind of what we're gonna see. We'll get to the output statement, the print statement in a bit. So we're gonna repeat this process for the next three operations. And to save a little bit of time, I'm going to copy and paste some code. So to do that, I'm going to hover my cursor over the condition part after the if, and right click to get duplicate. And you can see it duplicates this whole block here. So I'm gonna put that on the second else, change the operator to the minus sign for subtraction, and then copy this set block. We'll see if, yep. So I, again, I just um, hovered over the set and clicked right click, put it in the do space and change the plus to the minus sign with the drop down. 
And I'm just going to do that to save some time. If you want, you can go back to the drawers that we did um, earlier, but this is a little faster. So again, hover over the condition, duplicate, attach the condition to the else, change the operator. This time we're going to do multiplication and we're going to use an X for multiplication here. Um, because that's typically what you use in school, or at least in elementary school, you're going to use the X as your multiplication symbol. And then go back to set and choose duplicate. And I'm going to use the drop down here to change it to X. So the program will match for these two. And then for the last condition, I'm going to hover over the condition statement again, right click, duplicate attached to the last if. Um, and for this one, we do not typically have a symbol on our keyboard for the usual uh, division sign, which is the two dots um, with a line between them. So we're going to use the um, backslash symbol. I believe that's the backslash. Um, if I'm wrong, it's the slash that's under the question mark on your keyboard. And then we're going to do the set and duplicate and change the X to the, the regular division symbol. So the two dots with the line between them. So this is why we have, so this is how we handle text with math is we have the symbol entered as text and then we process it. We see if they match this, if these two text symbols match. If they do, it'll um, add them together with the math operation. So we don't even use the um, variable here. We just use the variable to check what we need to do in the conditions. And we do that for all of them. Um, something that we don't cover in this program is that you might have to tell your users which symbols you'll accept. So um, we will have an error. So we're going to go to text and go get a print statement, print ABC put it in this last else block and type um, invalid, whoops, invalid um, operation. So typically where you have an error, you might say invalid operation, um, program only accepts plus, let's do plus, minus, multiplication and division operators. So you might print that out just so that your user knows exactly what they did wrong. If you don't, they're left guessing. So you might, you tend to give more specific instructions and errors and handle errors within your programs, but this is just an entry level one. So we're not going to handle that, but just so you guys know, the last thing we're going to do is, um, do output for this program so that we can see what the operation actually is and if it works correctly. So go to the text block and we're just going to get a plain, hold on, a plain print statement, I think. Yep, print ABC. Attach it to the outside of our if statement. So we're at the bottom now. Then go back to text and get this create with text block and place it over that ABC. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit here. Okay, so we have two spaces here. We need a little bit more. We're actually going to have five um, connecting spots. So let's click on that gear and add three more item blocks. And once we have one, two, three, four, five, click the blue gear again to close the window. Um, so we're going to create text using our variables for the most part. So we're going to go to our variables drawer and get num1. And then go to variables and get num2. Or sorry. Well, yes, you can get num2, but place it in the third blank. And then go to variables and get operator. So it should go num1, operator num2. I'm going to go back to variables and get answer and place it in the very bottom here. So answer is the last one. And then go to text and get this simple text block here. Place it in our last empty space and inside we're going to use the equal sign. 
Um, so this handles the text. Depending on language, you can do this easily. Um, some languages might require you to convert all of our numbers to a string. Um, it just depends on the program. But what this is going to do is it's going to print the number we stored in num1, the operator we stored in this variable, um, the number we stored in num2, and the answer we calculated from here. And this is going to print it all out in a formatted string for us. So let's run our test again by clicking the play button here. And I'm going to hit 2 plus, oops, sorry. And then we'll do plus. So we have 2 plus 3 equals 5. And just hit OK. Um, so you can run that as many times as you want. Test out the other options to make sure they work how you expect them to. Um, and over here, we can see what the code will look like in JavaScript. So here we declared, we created our variables. JavaScript doesn't have types, which, which means um, we don't have to worry about making the numbers integers or floats or the operator text. It will just handle whatever you store in it, how you store it. Um, some things in Python, things default to C that way because it also doesn't require you to have a data type with it. Um, this is our prompt to store the variable in num1, the prompt to store the variable, to store a number in num2, and the prompt to get our operator sign. Here's our if statement. So it's very similar to what we have. We have the if, the condition in parentheses, um, the bra curly brackets with our do action here. So this is what we're actually going to do and what we're going to store it in. You don't have do in this syntax. Um, but it's that same idea. You can see our else if, and you can see else. So very similar to what you guys built in the blocks. Um, and then you can see our final output statement here at the very bottom. So um, Python, like I said, we're gonna look at that one real quick. It's very similar. In Python, you do have to give your variables and a value initially. So you might um, initialize these to zero or none. Um, we used a function here to run the prompts instead of asking over and over, it looks like. Um, oh no, this is a function to validate that the um, is text. So this validates your input to make sure that it's correct or that you entered the right format. Um, we didn't build that, but it's something that you would do in, in Python and most languages, honestly. This is a type of error checking that you would do. And then you can see our prompts from here. So yeah, um, that's pretty much all the same thing. Our print statement's a little bit more complicated at the end, but not too much. Um, but that's pretty much the program. If you guys wanted, you could add some more functionalities to our math, like adding powers, or um, you could look up what a modulus and is so that you could try that one. That's something that's used in coding a lot. Um, you can try adding extra numbers to the program to handle that. What would that look like? Would you use all three numbers in an equation or all four numbers in an equation? Or would you pick and choose which one, which operation gets which one? Um, so you can kind of play around with that stuff. Other than that, we're done with this activity. If you want to come to our live lessons, you can register at, by going to Ucode Jam. Under Jam at Home, click on Bits and Bytes. We are partnered with Palo Alto and they are handling registration for our Bits and Bytes courses now. So you will click on this Learn More and Register Today button and it will take you to their page. And right now we have, um, we just finished Digital Literacy. We are, this video is for the Code Adventures Blockly. We'll have Puzzle Club and we'll do another Code Adventures at the end of November, beginning of December. And we will run through the end of 2020. So we have lots of um, lessons coming up. They're from 4.30 to 5.30 Central Time. So we would love it if you could um, join us at the live sessions. Have a great day.